Hi and welcome to a new video. We have just overcome the first big hurdle, more than 1k subscribers. Thanks very much for your support. Hopefully we can grow even more, so please help to spread the word. In social media or other forums, by for example linking videos in discussions you've joined and where the content fits. I got a request by one of my patrons. Alexei wrote if I could do videos on mixing, especially about face distortion while making some tweaks in equalization. It would be really helpful to understand what actually happens with sound and face while equalizing and how to avoid mistakes and harm face while mixing. Well, as patrons always have priority in terms of getting requests fulfilled, here we go. I got here a simple example with a sine wave playing at C at 131Hz. I can hyperfilter filter it, treat it with a peaking band, no problem at all. The sine stays a pure sine, without any side effects at all. As long until I bring in a second tone, playing the same pitch. Without having any filtering active, they both playing perfectly in sync. But as soon as I enable my high pass filter, you can already see the two tones getting out of sync. The green line which was hidden previously underneath the purple one gets suddenly visible. Even I am not close to the frequency it is playing. Moving the filter upwards makes things worse and worse. And around 77 Hz the two tones nearly disappear. And this isn't related to the actual filter action. As you can see, I am still far too low to be able to affect the tone by the filter. And by muting the second tone, the one with the EQ plugin plays absolutely fine. Coming from the other side with a low pass filter, it's doing the same to my audio at about 223 Hz. While again, this just happens when both tones are playing. The filter itself is set far too high to treat the sound in any way. Trying with different filter types, for example a peak filter here. If I boost the exact same frequency, both tones stay in sync. Just the booted tone gets louder. But watch if I go left and right with my peak filter. The effect is not as drastic as with the high pass and low pass. But you can see that going with the filter to the left brings the two tones out of sync on the right side. Going to the right results in being out of sync on the left side. It's not much, but something is happening here. Let's go back to my high pass filter example at 77Hz. The PEQ2 has already grown up and brought us very nice features with the recent updates. The one we need here at the moment is to make face changes visible the filter causes. Wow, that's what happening to the filter tone. A 24 dB high pass filter inverts the face of a filtered signal exactly at the cutoff frequency. Let's check if that is true. I place my high pass filter exactly on the peak and compensate for the loudness loss because I am actually filtering here. And again, it's not the filtering which silences the complete sound. Muting the other brings back our sign despite being filtered. The filter just reduced the volume a bit, which we compensated with the EQ output volume. Turning on and off the plugin gives us the same result. But with both tones playing and enabling the filter, we are left with nearly silence. The high pass filter brought the face upside down and both tones cancel each other out. Where the purple one is on its highest level, the green one is on its lowest level. What we have here is a simple sum, simple math. Plus one, minus one, 
equals in zero means silence in terms of sound. But wait, why did that happen before by setting the filter to 77 Hz? Because before I set it to a steeper slope. Raising the steepness of a filter causes even more phase distortions. With the double steepness I am getting suddenly two points where the phase invert happens, instead of one. And suddenly, without changing the filter cutoff, my signal is back in phase again. The phase shift happens now below and above the cutoff frequency in this case at 77 and 223 Hz. Are these values familiar to you? These were the points I used before with the high pass and low pass filter to cancel the sounds out. But using both together brings the phase back in sync. Speaking about phase, we are talking basically about the circle and we measure the phase equally in degrees. The high pass filter changes the phase by 180 degrees, means upside down. The low pass filter changes the phase equally by 180 degrees, again upside down. Using both together brings us a full cycle of 360 degrees and we are back again in phase. Just to recap this. Minimal phase filters like a normal EQ or for example filters in synth or samplers change the phase of the filtered signal. The filter type and the filter steepness, respectively the amount of filtering, define by which amount and at which points at or around the filter frequency these changes happen. High and low pass filter changing the phase far more than normal peak or shelving filters. These phase changes aren't noticeable when playing the tone in isolation, but can cause issues when playing in context with other sounds. Often it's recommended not to EQ a sound in isolation. This is one of the reasons why. But there is a second option which was brought to PEQ2 with the recent updates. Linear phase mode. Hitting this button does the magic. Suddenly all my phase shifting disappears and everything stays completely in phase. The plugin doesn't even show any grey line for the phase anymore. One could easily get the idea this would be the best option for all situations. But is that the truth? Let's have a look at a different example. We leave FL Studio for a second, as in this program, it's easier to demonstrate. I got here a so-called direct signal, which is basically only a short spike in a file of silence. If I low pass filter this signal with a normal minimum phase EQ, I get this response. This looks very drastic, but please keep in mind we are talking here about a few samples, means a very very short amount of time. Don't ask me why, but the filter acts a bit like a delay. So the filtered event happens later in time, which is the reason for the phase shifting effect we have already seen. If an event happens at a later point in time, which isn't correlated to the original timing, we automatically change the phase of a signal. Doing the same with a linear phase filter with the same settings gives me a different response. This little bubble now happens around the same spot where the direct spike happened. To be sure not to cause any phase issues, linear phase filters causing latency of several milliseconds, which get compensated by your door. With this little trick it is possible to travel back in time and place events before they actually happened in reality. And because of this little trick any change of the timing of the phase of the signal is avoided and the phase stays unaltered and always in sync. But this causes a different problem. The response is not a simple spike anymore but more of a less precise bulge. Putting the center of this bulge to the center of the original spike to avoid any change of the phase 
results in some kind of fade in at a place where before no sound was happening at all. This behavior is called pre-ringing and is a big negative side effect of linear phase EQs, especially with signals which combine low frequencies and transients. These transients can get smeared and muddy sounding with this effect. Here is an example with a high pass filtered kick. The minimum phase high pass starts exactly in sync with the original sample. But the linear phase filtered one has suddenly sound happening where it doesn't belong to. It is not always noticeable, but keep in mind that linear phase filters can influence the sound in a better way too. On top of that, we have quite a bit of latency for every instance we use in our project, while a minimum phase EQ doesn't cause any latency at all. So here it comes again to the title of this video. To EQ or not to EQ? After all this destruction of our original sounds and all of these side effects, that's a valid question indeed. All options we got have their downsides and we are not able to get a really clean signal. So should we stop EQing at all? The answer is of course no. In most cases, you will not even notice all of these side effects at all, as the actual effect of the filter is far more intense than some small phase shifting problems. However, even if something bad should happen, especially for minimum phase EQs, there are ways to get rid of these side effects or even use them to our advantage. Let's imagine in our little sign example, a steep high pass filter would be necessary to filter out some low end rumble, which we want to get rid of. Let's further assume that shit happens and we need to set the filter exactly where it harms the signal most and the two tones cancel each other out. No problem. Just invert the phase on one signal in the mixer and see if it helps. It does it perfectly here. For those who always wondered what to do with this button, now you have seen one important use case. But sometimes there might be situations where you go from the frying pan into the fire. No matter how I set the invert button, the result is equally bad. Just changing from being out of phase on the left side to be out of phase on the right side. All you need is a delay. Put it on the channel which happens too early, which is the green one in our example. Reset everything and set the delay out of tempo syncing. No feedback and fully wet. At 2 milliseconds everything is back in phase again. Sometimes it's even enough to change the filter's frequency a little bit to get rid of any problems. Sometimes this phase shift is even necessary because it creates an interesting sound. One of the most popular examples are Psytrance basslines. I created here a typical bassline. It sounds at the moment like this. For this genre we need a more complex waveform and the trick is to use crossover filters from a frequency splitter to reach this. No matter if you use our relatively new plugin or for example Maximus for the job. As I just need the filter bands and no further processing, I go with the first. I set it to just two bands and lower the value to the minimum 30 Hz. You can already see that because of the phase shifting effect we discussed before, the waveform already changed. And the sound has changed as well. But why phase shifting? Didn't I say before this would only happen if more than one signal is played at the same time? And here I just have a single synth playing. The frequency splitter is operating like this. For the low band, we have a signal going into a low pass filter. But this on its own would kill all other frequencies. We want to split the signal and not just low pass filtering. Means we need a second time the same source signal, but this time just the higher part without the low end. 
So we let it run through a high pass filter and set the same cutoff frequency as the first one. Now we need to bring all together again and we get a new signal which consists out of two. Two filtered signals which are now layered and shifted in phase because of the filtering. Back to our original example. I set the split frequency to my wished point. The waveform has already changed a bit, but still not enough. I duplicate this first instance and set it again to a lower frequency and adjust it to my liking. That's already quite juicy sounding, but has a problem. We have created some big spikes, which will go easily into the red when mixing. To create more body and reduce these spikes, I duplicate the splitter again. But this time I'm coming from the top. Focus on the spikes on the waveform. At around 300 Hz, we have eliminated most of these spikes and have a nice new complex waveform. And this was just possible because of the phase shifting effect of the filters. Doing the same with linear filters, which I got on the second track, would sound like this. That's not what I want or need in this situation. For more examples, please watch the corresponding video from Dan Worrell, who made this video for FabFilter. As always, the link is in the description. He is the god of explaining such stuff perfectly and provide you with nice examples to demonstrate the differences, much better than I will ever be able to do. However, I'm coming to the same conclusion as he did. Most of the time, there's not even the need of a linear phase EQ and the minimum phase ones do sound even better. In general, please don't worry too much about this topic. It's important to know what's going on, to be able to start measures if something bad is happening. But in general, just use your ears. If it sounds good, it is good. Check your EQ decisions always in context of the song and never start to treat material different just because you see changes on an oscilloscope, but just if you can hear some bad behavior. Not before then, I would recommend to check the normal EQ with the linear phase setting. Or if this not work properly, start to manipulate the phase with the invert method or by delaying. One of these ways will always lead to a satisfying result. Have a good time, stay tuned and thank you for watching.